The president of Oklahoma Wesleyan University has drawn national attention in recent weeks for his blog post, This Is Not a Daycare, It's a University. In it, he writes that students should be willing to be confronted about their ideas and says Oklahoma Wesleyan is not a safe place, but rather a place to learn. Joining us now is President Everett Piper. Dr. Piper, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. You write that you had an encounter with a student after chapel that inspired you to write this blog. What happened? Well, essentially, what we had is our required chapel attendance uh, here at Oklahoma Wesleyan University is twice a week, Wednesday and Friday. And after one of the services in which the topic was 1 Corinthians 13, the quintessential love chapter of the Bible, one of the students came forward to the speaker afterwards and said that he felt singled out and likewise his peers did. He essentially played the victim card and said that the speaker should not have, have made him feel that way. As the result, I decided that I would challenge the students and challenge our community and frankly challenge the broader college with a capital C, if you will, my industry for what's going on on our college campuses and this this uh, inclination to throw a trigger warning, if you will, down on anything that makes the student feel uncomfortable. I don't think that's good education. I think the classical liberal arts education should challenge you and not make you feel comfortable, and thus my note. Okay, what kind of response have you received to your post on campus? I think the campus response is very, very favorable. The faculty are unified in supporting this position, and many of the students are too. We've got a lot of great students at Oklahoma Wesleyan University, and they're here for the right reason. They understand our Christian identity, and that it is our obligation within the body of Christ to confront and to challenge, and that that bad feeling you have in a chapel, if you will, is called your conscience. And you should respond with repentance and confession, not by throwing the victim card down. Indeed. Well, what kind of response have you received to your post from around the country? We've had 950,000 views of this article on our website. And that's aside from anything that you all in the media are doing. So the response has been overwhelming. I think I started a bit of a grass fire by simply telling a college community that I want you to learn. I don't want you to feel safe per se. Well, you write in your blog that our culture has taught youth to be self-absorbed and overly concerned about anything that might hurt their feelings. But there are real problems in our country surrounding race, sexuality, religious liberty, and some minority students have faced and continue to face discrimination. What do you think is the best way to encourage debate on college campuses in light of such realities? I think it's to go back to the classical liberal arts model and the church upon which it was founded. If you want to go back a thousand years, let's say Oxford and Cambridge, the liberal arts academy was established to liberate people to give us freedom, to give us liberation and liberty. That is why the liberal arts college and university was founded. And how do you have that freedom? Jesus tells us where it comes from. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Truth is the judge of the debate. Truth is the judge of the exchange of ideas, if you will. Truth sets us free. Opinions lead to bondage and slavery. And that is the beauty of the Christian message. The beauty of the message of Christ is he tells us how to have personal and corporate and social freedom. It is to honor the truth as the judge and not establish everyone as being their little judges and little gods to start imposing all of their ideas and opinions upon the rest of culture. Dr. Everett Piper, thank you so much for your time today, sir. We appreciate it. Blessings to you.